stay on that here and we're going to go ahead and smoke a ham is that what we're doing yes okay we're going to smoke a ham in this here, here pit boss smoker i wanted to make this uh, review because this is an electric smoker we already have an electric smoker and it's huge uh but when it was cold outside it wouldn't cook a turkey or a ham all the way now granted we got it off of a little bargain barn is what it was called and it had a dent in it that maybe made it to where it didn't seal up so i don't know if that smoker is just a piece of junk or what but in the winter time it would not actually cook it hot enough in a 12 hour day to be able to cook a turkey so that gives you a lot of problems with being inside the garage and you can't really smoke in the garage with your smoker and smoke up the whole place and all that and you got the winter time so you got thanksgiving and christmas going on everybody wants that smoke stuff pit boss three series electric smoker silver star it does the uh 685 inch but it got several racks it's supposed to be able to cook uh 2.7 cubic foot smoking chamber with seal tight technology it's a five in one man i don't need to read all this crap oh braised smoke baked roast and barbecue so oh, i gotta wait 30 minutes I know, look how, let me get this part look how airy they are Chris made some muffins. I'm gonna eat that. I'm about to start lunch. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the audio on this video because it's just gonna be unboxing and I'll talk about it as I'm doing it. I'll put it together, get it ready, get it outside so my wife can smoke a uh, ham. And We'll see how it turns out, and we'll see how this thing does in about 30 degree weather. They never tell you if it's cold outside, if it's going to cook at all. So, it's pretty late, so we better get started. Alright, what we do first, we go ahead and get it out of the box. Uh, with this, it's kind of heavy, so I had to lay it on its side to pull it out to where I'd be able to work with it. Wife had to hold the box because it kept sliding all over the place. Once you get it out, you go ahead and set it up. Make sure you throw all your trash in your box so it's not just laying around. It's even got boxes inside of it. Which those are the legs, the base, uh, the main board. Because, quite frankly, they're, when you first get it, it kind of looks intimidating because there is quite a bit of stuff that goes into this bottom part. I mean, you have to physically put everything together. But I kind of understand as big as it would have to be to ship if it was already made and put together. So first things first, we get the boxes out of it and then we go ahead and lay everything out. Might as well go ahead and unwrap and lay everything out to where you can see everything that you have. Because if you keep it just like a little piles, you're searching through the piles and all kinds of stuff like that, it kind of makes it a headache instructions here you can see that's the picture of the smoker after it's all done and those were the wheels there's two of them that lock and then there's legs on the inside of the legs there's uh, little stickers to tell which ones go which uh, the locking ones go on the front I believe if I remember right but there's four screws in each one of these uh, wheels that screw onto the bottom of the legs. You got to make sure that you put the locking ones on the right one according to the manual. Uh, see those shish kebabs? Oh my gosh, we cooked those on the grill yesterday. It's amazing food. But here we go again, working on these legs. There's four of them, so you have to do all four. And then, after you get all your legs done, you grab the base of it, and we start to work on that. Wasn't aware we were kind of out of the camera angle there. So, I did a little bit of work off the camera and finally figured out how the legs kind of go on there. 
the legs, the two that go on the front, have uh, brackets on the sides that screw in, and they have screws on the very bottom right there, as you can see. And then there's a couple screws, like right inside of it, right there. I like this a lot better than the master built because the legs it has the four screws on the master built the legs just kind of wobble around so that's kind of a headache and when you first get it uh that front piece is screwed is loose and you may think that needs to be tightened down but these front legs actually need to be put on before you tighten down that front part that has all the digital readings and stuff and by the way, you really shouldn't use an impact driver on this. I just did it because I have a tattoo appointment in about an hour. And I wanted to make sure I got done putting this together so wife could cook food while I went and got my tattoo. So once you got those in there, we we'll go ahead and look around like we're crazy. Don't know what we're looking for. Yeah, the inside bolts, they're kind of at an angle if you use an impact driver on that. So a small screwdriver is the best way to do it, to get them started anyway. And then once they're started, you can go ahead and hit it with the impact driver because then you won't cross-thread it. Back legs are a little bit easier to find there, a little bit easier to get on. You still got the two screws on the side. Once you put those in. Of course, until you get all the screws started, you really don't want to tighten them down because you might have to move it a little bit to get one of the other screws in the hole. Or, and if you try to screw it in when it's at any kind of an angle, the screws will cross thread and inevitably ruin your uh, threads for the screws. But you got that screw on the bottom right there. Then you got the two on the outside. Then we get the other leg on here. Just get your screw started so the leg can stay up by itself. It's really not that hard it's just kind of intimidating when you first see everything that you pull out of the box because there's a lot of stuff that goes with it just don't be scared of it. it it's a little bit easier after you get going on it the instructions definitely do help i had to read the instructions on this one because there's quite a bit that you could forget or put in I mean, even going through all this and making sure I did the instructions right, at the very end, there were a couple screws I had to find where they went. And, you know, you get in a hurry and you forget to put one in of the three on the legs. One of the leg screws is actually the screw that I forgot to put in, honestly. But after you get it all situated, tighten up real good. And there's this cross member that goes through on the back which is a really nice feature because it keeps the legs from bending in or concaving. Uh, now, the screws are a little bit different size. On the base and the legs and all that, there's two sizes of screws. One's smaller and one's bigger. The legs, when you screw on the wheels and screw the legs to the actual smoker, the screws for those are all pretty much the same size. but. With this, this little bracket going across here, the screws are a little bit smaller. Of course, your instruction manual will tell you what screws go where, but if you're trying to do it without looking at the instructions, just realize that if the screw is too big, there's only a few sizes there. Then you have the side brackets on the other side, which is not on this not parallel with the digital reading or nothing i really like the idea that these brackets are here because it gives it side support on the legs too as well as cross support on the legs so 
on the other smoker, when the legs are all coming through, you had to keep tightening the screws on the legs because, you know, you move it around and it just loosens them screws up. Well, this one here has a lot more support, so I don't think I'll be having to worry about that with uh, doing the tightening down the legs all the time. And that was kind of a headache, you know. You get lazy and don't do it, and then the screws start to fall out, and then you're out the screws. you got to find new screws. So, you got one for both sides, and of course you got to put them both on. Impact driver makes it so much faster. Trying to do the screwdriver, it would take it all day. But and you just move your uh, cord out of the way there. It has a little uh, oh those two screws I told you at the very beginning not to tighten down and they were loose. This is when you tighten them down after you got the legs all secured in there. Make sure they're tight. Then you can tighten that front display. And this here, it's the catch that takes the wood chips and, well, actually, no, this doesn't do the wood chips. This right here catches the drippings, I think, is what it's for. There's just four screws that go around the outside there. Get those good and tight. That way it don't start to drop or anything like that. The master uh, built the droppings would come out the back it would have like a little pan in the very bottom where it would all drain out the back and if you didn't have it level it would drain out the front as soon as you open the door so i definitely like how this one goes underneath it instead of behind it so that's definitely a benefit over the master built and right over here it does have a little place to secure the cord to the leg which is actually a good idea because, you know, if you got it plugged in or the cord is hanging down, there is a time when you could step on the cord and pull it and knock over the whole smoker and ruin the whole thing. So you don't want to go ahead and secure that cord to there in case you actually step on it and pull on the cord. It don't mess with the electronics at all or anything like that. So it's, it's definitely a good safety feature to have on there as well. I can see why they put it on there. And right there by where my hand is, I didn't realize it, but I forgot to put on the <coughs> whole cord wrap. There's a little bracket that goes on that bracket that screws onto the bottom of it. Right where those pliers are, the handles of the pliers, there's two screw holes. You can put the bracket on either side, but I just forgot to do it right there before I flipped it over and we started working on the top part. But after you get those the cord all situated, and of course, don't forget your cord bracket like I did, you go ahead and start working on this. You take that door off, it just pulls straight up because it's got pins on it. So... The reason you want to take the door off so it don't fall forward on you or anything, make it kind of hard. Right now what I'm doing is applying the vents. Uh, they have little tabs that go through the back. You put the vent cover on in the inside. You run the screw from the outside to the inside. And then there's two little lock washers and lock nuts that go on the screw on the inside. And you just tighten it from the outside. There are two of them, so now I'm working on the other one. <coughs> you don't want to get them super tight because you do still have to open and close. Those are the vent covers. And even though you close the vent covers on there they don't close all the way it does still have gaps so it kind of looks weird on the back 
you'll see it here in a few when I get it all put back together and turn it. Now you put the handle on the back of it. See the vent covers? Those are actually closed. You can see inside of it with the vent covers closed, so. That kind of had me stumped too, because I was like, oh, it's supposed to close, and well, it didn't actually close. Now with this back handle, there's a couple screws that go in both sides. You just put them in there, get them started. Then of course, I use the impact to go ahead and zip them up tight. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get them started though, but that's okay. Just take your time with it. Don't get aggravated. Don't get mad about anything. If I had a cameraman, I would have had some better angles for y'all. I do apologize for that. I hope that this does help you out though, even though you can't really see up close on most of it. But after you get that hand on, now it is time to go ahead and lock your wheels. Uh, it tells you to in the book. That way it don't slide around on you while you're trying to put this on top of it. It does have a little bit of a recess, so it sits perfectly on there. Uh, it's not one of those things where it's going to be sliding around on there. It does kind of have a little spot that it falls into. Now what you do is you run the same screws that you had left from that around on the inside. If I remember right, there were six of them, two on each side and two on the back. May have been two on front too. I don't, I don't remember doing the voiceover. I, this is way after I built it the next day actually. So, But you'll see all the little screw holes in there and you'll have just enough to go in there. So, you'll be alright. Now what I'm showing you is the little, uh, I think it's the thermometer bracket that tells how hot it is inside the thing. Uh, the thermometer is just laying in there. I was sitting there looking around for it on the floor as, it, as if it was a part. But no, it's connected to the base. So you just look in there and you poke it up through there, that hole that's in the frame. And then the bracket kind of supports it is all the bracket really does. These are the adjustable shelves. I've just got a couple of hooks like pegboard. You just slide them into them. You can adjust them up and down. That is really nice over the master built that we have. There you go, you go ahead and put the door back on. You see the little pegs? Those just slide into the other little loops. And there you go. You got your door on. And now we go ahead and put all the insides into it, which starring, there's a little bracket that you put in for the water pan, which I do have to say when you're cooking with this thing, you gotta make sure that water pan don't go dry. It don't hold a whole lot of water. And a couple hours, it uses all that water up. So you want to make sure that you keep going and checking that water pan when you're cooking. Then we got the racks we put in there. You just slide them in. It's really a convenient design, honestly. I love how the shelves go up and down. That way you don't have to find a place for the rack. You can go ahead and take out the side ones because it's a pretty tight fit going side to side if you use a baking pan. This here is where I'm mounting the hardware to hold the door shut. You just got the two screws in the part that actually fastens to the front part. And then you got the two screws on the actual front part that goes into the door. And that has a little hook thing that hooks over the small part on this. So you got to make sure you get it facing the right way. The short part going towards the connector and the large part is actually the handle that you open the door with so we'll make sure you don't get that backwards now 
And I think the screws on the door handle were different than the screws on the other part, if I remember right. Might want to check your book on that one just to make sure. This is the uh, wood chip tray, which is really nice that you can put that much stuff in that tray. You can put a whole day's worth of pellets in it, and the wood chips, you can put wood chips in it. Now right here, you can see it's a screw, a screw hook. You can tighten it up and loosen it up. You want your door to shut and be tight, closed. <coughs> Especially when you're cooking out in 30 degree weather like we will be today. It is really, really cold outside. Love that we have heat in this house. That's for sure. Now what I'm doing is I'm laying it down. You remember when I told you earlier that it has a bracket to hold the cord? Kind of like a vacuum sweeper does. Well, this is where I realized that I had a part left over. So we took some time and had to go through the book and say, Hey, where's this little... It's kind of shaped like a C with wings. <laughs> so you go... I had to go through the book and where does this go and it was on one of the pictures it's kind of blended in i was doing another step that was there on the same picture and i guess i just missed that one step now i do have to say the cord holding bracket is really flimsy and light uh, and the cord is very heavy and thick so, while it's cold outside, it's kind of ha hard to wrap it around this uh, cord thing. Because it's just real thin. And I could see you bending it after a while if you tried too hard to get a stiff cord on there. And in the summertime, it would probably go on there just fine. But that little cord holder should have been a little bit thicker. That had been my only complaint so far. So you can see me trying to wrap the cord on it. It don't like go on it tight because the cord's so stiff and it's cold outside. But I did get it on there. Then I'll go ahead and put that drop thing in the front. I don't really know what that's for, but that's fine. We'll figure it out sooner or later. All right, here we go, the finished product. I'll tell you right now, it looks uh, built a heck of a lot better than our other one, but sounds like somebody's ready for a nap. You never should really use a drill on that stuff, on the screws, but I was kind of in a hurry, I got a tattoo appointment. That's it, and as you can see, it's pretty good size on the inside. A few pointers. These things here are adjustable. You can go up and down with them, take them out. That's definitely definitely a better feature over the so you can make them Master Forge. Big turkey in it. And it's got locks on the wheels. So it rolls freely. Since you put it together, all screws are tight the other one the screws all came loose and stopped working well the legs are about to fall off of it the other one. all right just to show you the comparison here's the pit boss that's brand new so it's gonna be a lot cleaner than the master built now when i said that this one was messed up I had to put hinges on it because of that right there. And these hinges up here broke off. So I just went ahead and put hinges on it, tried to make it work. And these are spring hinges. So you open it and it'll close. <laughs> but this thing, it wouldn't cook a turkey out here in this 30 degree weather. 
just to show you 28 degrees but I just wanted to bring it over here and show you the comparison I'm gonna plug it in over there so we don't have cords coming through because I don't want to open my big door but yeah maybe the Sun will give it some more heat make it cook a little faster don't know but what are you talking about kid hey what okay well, let's go see how the smoker did all right here it is pit boss and we tried it out it is still 27 degrees it pretty much was all day long that one over there when it was cold it wouldn't get hot enough out here this one here actually did it and you can see it's cooling down because it's done uh, it's, it went for about six hours. Look at that. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. that'll do hey man while you're at it check out my other youtube channels the stay home dad the back in handyman the dorser family and the average stoner just a little bit of what i do from day to day as a stay home dad thanks for watching if you like the video and want to follow my process like share and subscribe thanks for